Hello and welcome to Ketterk Builds. Today, we're going to be diving in and building our first tier one iron factory. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of several of these pieces of equipment to get them out of our way because we want our factory to be built completely on top of these foundations. And so I'm actually going to remove even the miner. And what we're going to be able to do is now extend this uh, platform out into the front of where our miner sits, but then also we can take these platforms backwards and build our miner on top of a foundation. And so if we do that real quick, you can see it sits up on top of the platform here and is pretty well centered. I did a pretty good job getting that going. And so we can take the ones off the side here because we don't really need them. Um, this is just to make sure that our miner is going to be at the appropriate height to interact with the rest of our base. And so one thing I'm going to do is move this platform out a little bit. I want to give myself some space between the uh, factory and that miner in order to handle any belt work that we need to do to get this belt where I need it on the factory. And so I've already got a factory build in mind for our iron. It's a build that I've used in the past and there's a lot of different ways that you can build your factories. I like to try and focus on factories that are somewhat compact and uh, efficient. And so in our case, we want to take advantage of the fact that we've got 120 iron ore coming off of this belt. And I want to use all 120 iron ore coming out of this uh, Mark 1 miner. And we don't quite have the logistics upgrade just yet, but we're going to have that here momentarily. I'm laying out this factory, assuming that we'll get logistics Mark 2 unlocked here in the next few minutes. And so in order to take advantage of all of the iron we have coming out of this Mark 1 miner, we're going to need a 4x4 area, and this is actually going to be a two-story factory. And what we're going to have coming out of this factory are really three things. And so the first thing we're going to have coming out of this factory is iron plates. And so I'm going to put a storage container right here in the center of this platform for iron plates. I'm just making sure that it's centered. I'm leaving a little bit of space here because we're going to put a wall down eventually and I'm going to need to hook this up to the wall once we get that unlocked. And then I'm going to put another storage container down next to it. This is going to hold iron rods. And then likewise, we're going to put one more container down here. And this container is going to hold screws. And so we should be able to output all the materials we need into these three containers and then um, either pipe these out to a truck or something that's going to take it to our main factory when we decide where we're going to build that or we can just run up here and grab the items that we need. And so in order to have all of our storage on the bottom floor where it's easily accessible, that means that some of our production is gonna have to start on the top floor. And so the first thing that I wanna do here is get some walls put up to make sure that as I'm putting down uh, different machines and things, I'm not putting them too close to the walls. And so I know that we're going to have to come back and add the walls with the conveyor belts to the front of this structure at some point and hook things up. But for the back of this structure, we don't really have any need for inputs. Um, this We're going to actually do something maybe a little bit counterintuitive. We're going to bring our iron up to the top of this factory first and then split it in and handle making iron plates up on the top floor and then we'll bring the excess iron back down to this floor at a later point in order to actually build the uh, iron rods and screws on this floor. And so what we're gonna do real quick is just get ourselves up to the second floor so we can start building this factory. Now, most of the machines that we're gonna build inside the factory are quite tall. And so our first floor is gonna be three wall segments tall. And so we're just gonna go ahead and toss those in here because it's easier to do from the ground floor is my experience. And sometimes you're gonna run into a problem where because you're standing so close to something else, you get a uh, encroaching message. And so with the advent of the vertical conveyor lift here, 
we're able to build a lot easier uh, vertically and have these uh, factories that kind of go up and down rather than just having huge uh, single floor factories. And so we're going to go ahead and toss down our floor for the second story and we've run out of concrete so this is what i was saying with uh, needing to get the uh, concrete stuff up and automated very early on is we're going to use a lot of concrete doing these uh, factory builds and so we're going to grab a little bit more concrete and get our floor put in here and then with our floor installed we need a way to get up there and since i don't have all of the cool things from the awesome shop unlocked yet we're going to use the uh, simple method for climbing up there, which early game is called stacking storage containers. So if you just stack a few storage containers on top of each other like so, then you've got a ladder built into the side of them. And so you can use that to just climb up on top and boom, we're up on top of our factory. So this factory is designed to take in 120 ore per minute, and that's going to come from this Mark 1 miner that's sitting on a pure node, because that's how much ore a Mark 1 miner will bring off of a pure node. And so we're going to have our Mark 2 logistics here soon that's going to be able to bring that 120 uh, ore per minute straight up onto the top floor of this factory. And what we're going to be able to do is take that 120 ore per minute up to the top of this platform, and we're going to split that into four streams because a smelter can handle 30 ore per minute. And so we're gonna be able to set up four smelters to take care of that 120 ore. Now, due to the space restrictions, because I wanna keep this in a four by four area, we're only going to set up three smelters on this top floor to handle the iron plate construction. And so we're gonna put a splitter on either side of this initial splitter, making sure that we get them pointed the right way. And what that's going to do is give me 60 ore coming out of each side of the center splitter. And now that I've got 60 ore coming into this splitter and 60 into this splitter, I need to further split that down into 30 ore per line. And so I'm going to run three smelters up here. And so I'm going to line a smelter up right in front of that splitter. I'm going to line a smelter up right in front of this splitter. And then we're going to put a third smelter right over here. I'm going to give myself enough space so that I know I can get constructors in front of these smelters because constructors are a little bit bigger than uh, smelters. And then since we've got 60 ore sitting here in this splitter, I can bring that straight into this smelter. I can also bring it out here and into this smelter. And then all we've got to do is hook this last smelter up here. And we've now got the iron ingot capacity to feed three constructors and create iron plates up here on the top floor. So let's go ahead and put these constructors down as well. And we'll go ahead and get these all belted and wired up here real quick and jump on to the next step. So I've got all my power production sitting up here on the top side of the construction site. So I'm gonna go ahead and run everything in such a way that our power will um, ideally get connected out on this side of the factory at some point. And so I'm just going to use three of these Mark 1 power poles for the time being because that's what we've got available to us. And I'm going to hook up the farthest machines here. We're going to hook this up to the next pole, this up to the next pole so I don't forget. So we've got one spot left on this pole, so we'll hook the back machine of this one up. And then on this pole, we'll hook this machine up and then we have run out of wire uh, but you can see we've got one spot left on this pole and uh, two more spots left on this pole because we've got to leave one empty to bring it outside and so we're going to be able to hook the rest of these machines up here and leave some capacity to pipe that outside so let's go get some more materials and finish up this build so with the power hooked up we're going to go ahead and put a few walls up here just to get things situated. Uh, we also don't want to forget about it. It's easier to do it while we're up here. And at some point here, we're going to unlock the things necessary to pipe this power right through this wall. Um, our awesome sink has been running, so hopefully we'll have some tickets by the time we're done with this. And what we're doing here is just 
uh, enclosing the areas that we don't need to do anything with. And so we're really only going to need to bring uh, two things out of the second floor here. And those two things are going to both go right here. The first being our iron plates. And so that's going to go right centered in the middle of this wall. And we're going to be able to bring the iron plates we're producing from this uh, setup and uh, these two setups into here. So we're going to need two mergers um, with the way that this works. And I'm going to put this second merger right here in front of this machine. And then we'll belt this in. We'll belt this in and then we've got to hook these two mergers up and so all of the plates from this machine this machine and this machine are now belted into this one merger which once we get our conveyor wall we'll be able to hook up to the wall here and pipe down now the other thing we need to do is pipe the remainder of the iron ore that we've split off down the side of the factory here and we're going to bring that back out through this wall and bring it down here into our factory and uh, build the iron rods and screws on the first floor. So back down here on the first floor, we can see now where we're going to be bringing our materials out here and here. Now, we want to bring these materials down and put them into this storage. And so we know that we're going to be able to bring our materials out from this storage. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a second storage container up on top of the first. And we're going to have this face the opposite direction so that we can bring the iron plates down from the top floor into this storage container. And then we're just going to hook these two storage containers together. So I'm going to put a conveyor lift right in here. And what that's going to do is uh, fill all these iron plates into both of these storage containers and push them out here because we're making quite a few iron plates. We don't want the uh, constructors up top to back up too soon. Uh, we're going to use a ton of these iron plates, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. And then over here is where we're going to be able to bring in our leftover iron ore that we're going to smelt and turn into iron rods and screws. So we're going to put a smelter right here in front of this. And we don't need a lot of room here. We just need enough to hook this up as it comes through the wall. And then I need enough room to put two constructors in here for creating iron rods. And so to do that, I'm going to come stand over here, I think, in this corner and just make sure that I've got enough space here. If I were to put down a constructor that I don't hit the wall and that should leave me enough room to put this one right next to it. And then all I've got to do is split the iron that's going to be coming out of the smelter in such a way that we can uh, power two of these uh, constructors. Now, it looks like I put my constructors just a little bit too far back, so we're gonna move those forward a smidge. So I realized that my smelter wasn't quite lined up in the right spot, so I moved it over one uh, notch so that this uh, splitter won't collide with our constructor. And so with that placed down, we're gonna feed this into the splitter. We're gonna feed this into the splitter and we're gonna take this splitter, bring it forward. And I like to have a little bit more rounded corners there. And with each of these set up now to create iron rods, we need to create screws. And so we need one more constructor for creating screws. And so we're going to put that constructor right over here along the wall. And I think that this is going to go somewhere around here. And it's not going to be perfectly aligned. Uh, it is going to have a little bit of an angle there for that belt, which is totally fine. But this is going to allow us to put a set of splitters in. Uh, because we don't need all of the iron rods coming out of this machine to create screws. Uh, because screws, if we look at the recipe here, only require 10 iron rods a minute. And our constructor is going to be creating 15 iron rods a minute. 
So we need to split five iron rods a minute off of this constructor and send them into the storage over here. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna set up a merger here to take that extra output. And then we're gonna take this splitter that I put down in the wrong spot. We're gonna bring it back here just a little bit and line it up like so. And then we're going to put a merger over here in front of this input. And what we're gonna be able to do now is take the 15 iron rods from here and bring them into this splitter. And then I wanna send five iron rods this way, five iron rods this way, and five iron rods this way. And so together, we're gonna have 10 iron rods going into our screw constructor. And then we've got uh, the excess five coming down here to be combined with the 15 coming out of this constructor, sending 20 iron rods per minute into storage. And so this allows us to maximize the efficiency of this build. Uh, and not really have anything wasted or going into overflow. And then just like upstairs, the last thing we need to do is get some power ran for all of these. And so I'm going to put a, a power pole here in the corner and hook up the smelter. And both of these machines. And then we're gonna run another power pole over here into the far corner and use this to hook up this machine. And then at some point when we're able to run this through the wall here shortly, we could just put it right here in the middle and get rid of this pole. But with that, we've now got all of our machines hooked up here. And so really the last thing that we need to do to be able to turn this on is unlock Mark II Logistics so that we can bring 120 ore up to the top of this factory and to buy our item from the awesome shop that's gonna give us the conveyor walls so we can finish sealing this in. So let's check on that progress. We're now at five printable coupons. And so we've been uh, pumping items into here until we have uh, gotten these coupons. So you can just hit print coupons. And then I'm gonna drag these five coupons up into my inventory. And we're gonna be able to take these right back over here to the awesome shop and turn those in to unlock our uh, conveyor walls. And so here we can see conveyor walls and these are gonna cost us five tickets. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into our cart, click on our cart and say, buy all. And so between the conveyor walls and then the other thing we needed to get access to was logistics mark two, which it looks like we've got all of the resources for here we're gonna be able to finish off our factory real quick here. And so this should go super quick. It is a little bit dark here, which is unfortunate. Um, one of the things they added with update four is lights. And so we'll need to unlock those at the awesome shop as well. But uh, while we wait for that, we're gonna just have to work through a little bit of the dark here, but I want to get all of these uh, wall segments put in here and we're putting them in in front of everywhere that we've got an output coming out and we are out of iron plates finally here. We need to get this factory up and running so that we can get some iron plates but just to get the handful that we need here to wrap things up I'm going to go ahead and turn off the awesome sink here and let these plates back up enough so that we can grab a few of these to build the last remaining walls that we need. All right, we've got a few. Hopefully it's enough. I think we only need to build like three more of these walls. So we're going to need one up here, one right here, and then we're going to need one on the back side of uh, this factory right up here. And what we're going to do is with our logistics, we have these uh, conveyor lifts Mark II, which is gonna bring my 120 uh, ore in, and we don't have enough of those either. One moment. First iron plates created, we've been able to hook up the miner to uh, this conveyor elevator, 
at a mark two rate so we're bringing 120 ore in per minute up to the top of our factory now and then from there we're splitting that out into our three belts of 30 to create our iron plates and bringing the remaining 30 over here to the side we're gonna bring that down to our smelter down below for making iron rods and we're bringing all of these plates out to this window here and then if we head back down here it looks like we've probably got a little bit of a power problem at this point and so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the awesome sink because that requires quite a bit of power and then if I just restart our power grid here we should have enough power to keep things going and so coming into here we've brought the excess iron ore down to send into our smelter and we should be able to go ahead and close up these walls and from the smelter we're bringing the uh, iron bars into these two constructors to create iron pipes we do have a hole in the wall to get our electricity out for the time being and these iron pipes are being uh, properly routed here so that we send the 10 that we need over here into this constructor to make screws and the remaining 20 are coming down here and going into storage so you can see here we're already starting to gather screws we're already starting to gather iron pipes and then in here we haven't started gathering uh, iron plates yet because I forgot to hook it up outside but we're gonna go ahead and hook up the outputs to each of these storage units and have them piped to the windows here so we're able to see which output those are and eventually get those items out as needed and so as I mentioned the last bit that we need to do here is to bring a conveyor down from this top window and send it into storage that's going to bring all of those iron plates out of those constructors into the container here and we're going to be able to get access to those items right here at each of those windows and so I'm going to go ahead and set down a few foundations just so that I can get up here and take a look at these storage units and our temporary setup here is uh, in the way now finally so we're going to get rid of that we don't have an immediate need for it we've used it to get all of our biomass turned into biofuel already and so you can see here though it's really handy to be able to see the um, item that's in the storage come out through the window and if you walk right up to it you can actually get access to the storage container without having to go inside the factory and so this is going to be really handy uh, for our starting setup here just to be able to get in and out and I think we need to hook up the conveyor up here for our plates to come in through the window and go to the storage container so we should see the iron plates start to uh, come through and gather into this uh, storage container now as the belts fill up so with this we've got a nice compact two floor four by four factory that's producing all of our iron components at an optimal efficiency and storing them in storage and so this is a really nice compact setup the only thing that we need to do is unlock the wall based power connectors so that I can pipe the electricity out the, through the wall without having to leave these gaps here realistically we could actually just uh, seal these up at this point I guess and have the wire clipping through the wall it looks a little shoddy but uh, we can live with that for now I suppose and at some point I would love to unlock the door as well so that we can come in and out of this and not leave a giant hole in the wall but rather just have a doorway and so we can actually go ahead and seal the second floor up all together and knock down these storage containers because we really don't need to go up and in there anymore now that everything is uh, running here nice and uh, self-contained and so the next thing that we could do we could do a couple of things with this uh, we could build another one of these right on top of this as we upgrade our mining capacity uh, or we can build them uh, right next to this and so we've got 
three more pure iron nodes here that we're going to be able to do this same thing with. Uh, and so it might make sense to just continue to stack these up on top of each other as needed, uh, rather than, you know, continue to build out in our entire area here with this. And so we've got some thinking to do, uh, but this has been kind of a basic starting iron factory. And this is going to give us all the materials we need to be able to continue to progress through the rest of the lower level tiers. Next episode, we'll look at unlocking the rest of tier two, which is essentially the part assembly milestone, which is going to give us access to assemblers, which is what we really need to be able to start building reinforced iron plates and rotors and things that require two different parts to combine into one single output. And so once we unlock part assembly, we'll then be able to unlock jump pads real quick because that does require 50 rotors. Uh, I don't really expect to use jump pads, but I like to clear everything in a tier before I move on. We'll likely be able to also jump right into getting our space elevator built, which is gonna be super exciting. The space elevator is what's necessary to move on to all of the uh, next sets of research and that is uh, gonna just require a lot of materials and so that's one of the main reasons that we got this uh, iron factory up and running here already i think this is a great place to wrap up this episode we'll see how this turns out in editing hopefully this hasn't been too long of an episode if it has i apologize as always, I would love to hear your feedback. Please leave a comment below. And if you've enjoyed the video and would like to see more, hit that like button and subscribe. That's all for today. Kedrick.